Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. And in this lesson, we will basically be doing our front end. So basically everything on here. So we will make this look pretty. As you can see, the navigation is not working. I know why. And we will, we will keep this the same as is. Obviously, what we want to do now is we want to bring in our post, our featured post. I will change this to featured post. And yes, we will, we will update these and we will obviously delete the pricing. If you want to keep it, you can keep it. Now the call to action, this will be probably in a couple of lessons from now, maybe uh, two videos from now, where we're actually going to do subscribe to our newsletter and we're going to change this to a subscribe and if we, the user clicks on it actually a modal pops up so the user can subscribe with the email and their name and yes so let's go back to vs code so basically we'll fix the navigation we will create a block controller with a route so basically if we go back right here in here we will have a little just make it a little bit bigger in here we will have a blog so if you click on there you will actually get to all the posts and pagination and the menu of all the categories all right so we'll do that let's go back okay so then we'll obviously add the blog link and then the single post component all right so let's get started in this lesson all right so the first thing that we're going to do is fix the navigation bar so let's open our resources views uh, components partials.nav this one right here all right so the first thing that we're going to do is we will see we have in our block right here our tag right here you will see a toggle color now if we open our main .js file you will see that that toggle is basically this to toggle right so we're basically query selecting the toggle color right there okay so that's this one right here let me just select everything and just push them push them up okay so this one so we're obviously just going to fix the javascript a bit the nav action button we don't have okay so we can delete that okay i'm just going to change this to ES6. I'm just going to change that to lead and these ones to const. Okay, I prefer the ES6 uh, syntax and just change this to lead as well. Okay, so we're not going to have the nav action, so we can delete the nav action. Okay, and let's see if there's another nav action. We can delete that. Okay, so basically what I've done is I just remove the nav action because if this gives an error, it's probably going to give us an error down here and that's why that nav is not working. Okay, so I just changed the to uh, modern uh, JavaScript syntax, the variables to let and const and this one as well, change the vars. So let's see if all, all is good. Right, so if I go down now, as you can see, the navigation is working. So it's not it's not broken anymore, because the reason for that is if we go to the Tailwind, the landing page theme. Let's just go there quickly. If we see the theme, you will see this button right here. This action button is that action button we were talking about. Now I, we remove that button, and from here and replaced it with log and register and the dashboard okay so when we remove that button it's always going to give us an error because the javascript depends on this button right here so that's why we removed it okay so we don't need that now we just need to go back here we just need now to create our block controller and our route now the reason for the block controller is basically like i said before all the post basically goes there with its route okay so let's go to our just leave your nav open or you can close it because we're going to open it again. Let's go to our web routes. Okay, so we're going to create a new route right here. So we're going to just underneath our home controller. 
we're going to create a new route. It's a get route. And that will go to, uh, let's go to block. Okay. Then inside that, we're just going to have a block controller class. Obviously, we don't have that class yet, so we, we're going to create it. I'm just going to call it index. And the name of the block will be just block. Okay, so, all right, so let's create our block controller. Let me just make it a bit bigger for you guys. Yes, I think that's fine. Hopefully this is big enough. Okay, so let's open the terminal and let's create our block controller. So PHP artisan make controller. And we can just call it block controller. Okay, and the model we need in there is the post, but I'm not going to attach any model to it. So I'm just going to leave it as is because we're only going to have one method inside our block controller. Okay, so let's make sure we import the block controller at the top. So once we created it, so let's go to our block controller now. So, okay, so in your block controller, we're just going to do a public uh, public uh, function. Now this one, I'm just going to create the construct method. Okay. So in here, we're obviously going to add the middleware. This dot middleware like this, but it, I'm just going to leave it empty. Let's say you want your users to, how can I put this? If you want certain users only to be authenticated to see your post, you can do that, but normally there's no need to do that. Okay, so I would just comment this out. So if you want to do that, you can do it there. Okay, so public function index. All right, so that will obviously be, we're going to return a view. Now the view will basically, I'm going to create a folder called pages. Now inside the pages, I'm just going to create a page called blog and then index okay so let's quickly create that so let's go to our views resources views i'm going to create a new folder called pages okay you can structure your folder however you want your files however you want but the thing is for me what works is the pages i know is the views that i see in front that the user will see that's the ones i normally Kind of put them in pages and yes it just works for me okay so inside this i'm just going to create a new folder called block now inside my block i'm just going to create a new file called index.blade.php okay now the thing is we obviously you inside your block you'll have a show method as well but we're not going to get to that yet All right so we just as you can see we can go to that view right there all right, so we set up our route right here. We linked it up to our controller, that index method. This class and index right here. That refers to this method right here. So we linked it up. Okay, and then we got obviously our route model name right there, block. Okay, so let's save that. I'm just going to return in this one, just, just, this is a block just like this just so that we know we can see that right okay so let's go to our navigation okay that's why i said we mustn't close it yet so you will see we created that auth for the dashboard so if the user is authenticated then only the dashboard will show otherwise the login or register will show all right now for us, we're just going to copy one of the routes. Let's just copy the login and just underneath the auth, let's put it there. Okay. So if you want the user to be authenticated, obviously just copy that and put it underneath your dashboard. Okay. But for us, we don't require authentication. The user can just see the block right here. So I'm just going to put block. Actually, I, I need to put it in front, just above the auth because I want it to be the first one that we see, All right? So the route will obviously change just to block. Okay, so let's see how it looks like. 
So in our browser, we refresh, we will see our block right here. So if we click that, you will see this is the block. So obviously this view we will uh, change in the next lesson. Okay. So we linked up our block, right? The next part will be for us to actually do this part right here. Okay. So let's do that. So inside VS Code, we can now close our navigation menu. So we've done that. We've created a broken curl in our route. We actually created our blog link. Now we need to create a post component. Now you will see in a second why I want to do that. Okay. So let's close our block for now. Let's open up your terminal. Okay. Just in here. So we're going to do inside actually we're not going to create a component like that so resources views under components um, just create a new file you can actually put it in a folder if you want but i'm just going to create a new file called post dot blade dot php so basically if if we created that component right in there so now it becomes a blade component Okay, so what will happen now is if we go to our homepage.index and we look for, this is basically the hero side. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking now for the title, the title part. So I'm just going to scroll down. There's a lot of SVGs. Okay, so this is our getting started action. Just looking. So this is our title right here. So this section, I'm just going to call this so I can find it easier. Uh, featured posts. Okay, so this is basically the post. If we select featured, then this post will basically be displayed here. All right. So what I'm going to do now, so I'm just going to change the title to featured post. Okay. Let me just put it like this. Now I'm looking for the div that is basically encapsulating the whole post. Okay, so the, as you can see, it's one, two, and three. So basically, these are the three posts. Okay, so I'm just going to copy the one. Let me just copy this one right here. So we copy that one and paste it inside our single post right here. All right, then we can delete all of them right here. Okay, we delete them all. Let me just make sure. Yep, let's delete them all, save it. And now what we're going to do now is we're just going to link that post. Uh, post like this. We're just going to link that post like this. And let's see if it works. Now, as you can see, that single post is in the spot right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we're obviously going to uh, move it, to put three in here. So let's do that. So let's move them down. One, two, three. Just like this. So I'm just copy it down three times. Let's see if it's... All right. As you can see, they the, all three posts shows right here. But that's not basically what we want to do is we're going to uh, use a for each loop. But we just wanted to create the component for now. So let's go back to VS Code. So it's all good. So let's go back to VS Code. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to pass the post variable to this component. Okay, so how do we do that? We're going to go to our home controller. All right, now inside our home controller, we're going to create a new, we're going to open an array. Or you can actually create a variable like this, like post equals to post, all that kind of stuff. But if you open it with an array, because if you do it this way, you're going to get used to a uh, live wire kind of way of doing things. So if we do like posts, okay, and the post is going to equal to the post. Right, so basically, we're going to basically say, where the post is featured, uh, featured, if I can spell, 
where the post feature featured equals to true. Okay, so basically what that's what we're going to do here. So the post where featured equals to true. Okay, where now, where not now. Let's just see where not now. Now where not now is going to be basically be the published ad date. Okay. And if, all right, the next part is going to be where the published ad is less than, let me just make a comma there, is less than or equal to today. Now the today variable, I haven't created it yet. We're going to create that in a second. Obviously it's going to basically give me an issue. I'm just going to say, give me the latest one. Okay. And take three of those because I'm only looking for three. And then we're going to just say get. All right. Now the thing is we need to create the today variable. We're going to do that up here so like today like this and today is basically going to equal to new date time like this it's all it does okay, and i'm just going to do it like this right so basically what i've done now is let me just put a comma in there instead of that okay so the post is equal to the post where featured must be true so if it's not featured we're not going to select that post okay we're not null the published ad date so basically saying if the published ad date is null okay we're not going to choose that if the published ad date is there it must actually be less than today so if the day is set in the future please don't select it okay and take the latest one and take three from it and just bring it all in a collection for us okay so that's basically what we're going to do so what we're going to do now in our home.index if we go there how we pass a variable to a blade component work as follows we have already done it but i'm just going to show it again so we just create a post variable like this okay then we open it and then we put two double quotes and then we just pass in the variable like this so now we're basically passing the variable to the component but we're not passing the post variable like this we're only going to pass a single post why because we're going to do a at for each okay for each post as post and then we can actually just pass that in there. So if you can see, this looks much better, in my opinion. So you only work with a single variable right here, okay? And instead of all of them underneath here, all the, this whole part being inside your index right here. For me, this looks much better, okay? But preference, if you guys don't wanna do that, you can just keep this between the, for each tag right there but for me i'm just going to use the component if we get used to using the components it just makes our job easier All right i'm just going to delete the pricing for now let me delete that because we're not going to need that All right so in our post component right here okay so we're obviously going to change this to the post title okay so they change that to the post title and this is just going to be a limit. We're going to limit the amount of text, for instance, is going to be inside the post. Okay. Otherwise, we'll have her because it's just a narrow, small block. So how do we do that? Now, remember, we, we used a WYSIWYG editor. So if we do like what we've done now, like this, basically what that does, it will actually um, remove the characters and actually the styling and all the kind of the stuff will be gone with it so how do we do that we can actually just do this with a bang bang like this and then we can actually uh, display the tags that comes from the div but I, we will 
from the database, but I will show you what that is. So we can just do a string a limit. Okay. So basically what we're doing is now we're just saying that we want to limit the how many how many characters. Okay, so we're gonna do string dot limit and then we open parentheses another one and we're gonna do a post dot body. Okay. A post body and inside this we just want to say how many words for us we're just gonna do to 200 words for now and if it reaches that we just want to put a dot dot notation like this right obviously the action button will be uh, just read uh, more for now and we obviously just want to link it now, I'm just going to change this button to an a tag just for simplicity sake and I'm just going to add an href like this equals to and I haven't added the route yet for a single post to show because I want to do that in the block controller like here. Let's just open the block controller. So basically I'm just going to put another method in here, public function, but we're going to deal with that a bit later. So we're obviously going to update it, but for now, I don't want to overwhelm you guys. I'm just going to put a hash for now. Okay, so let's save that and go back to the browser. Okay. Okay, as you guys can see, the featured post is basically empty because we haven't done any featured post. So let's go to our database and just change two or three posts to featured. Okay, just manually. All right, so we're inside our block with our post right here. Now, as you can see, this one's featured is set to zero. I'm just going to. Let's just choose this one and just change it to true to one and this one to one as well, just so that we have three. Now, this is obviously not how we're going to do it inside our inside our dashboard right there. We will be able to change this uh, from the dashboard. But for now, we're just going to do it to show that, that this is working. So let's refresh. Now, as you can see, those three posts were basically displayed right now. Okay. So as you can see right there, obviously you can style the buttons however you want. This is not basically about the styling lesson. This is just more of how the back end, how you can actually code the stuff works. Okay. So we've done that. Now let's go back to VS Code. So basically what we have, what happened there in our home.index, just with the featured, if it's set to false, then basically it will be an issue. Like we said, it must be set to true and zero is false and one is true with the published ad date and all that kind of stuff. So all is good now. So it, we know that it's working. Okay, so we return the post.index. Obviously, this button and stuff like that, we will actually create it to be functional. Okay, so as the post as a whole, as you can see right there, this tag right here, we will also do the same. So if the user clicks on that, they will be actually taken to the right place. Right, so we're just going to change the... I think let's add that image of us as a... I'm just going to change the P tag to an image. Obviously, we don't need that. And then we're going to add a source attribute. And that's going to be equal to storage path well, let's just do it like sorry pardon me there let's just quickly what we're going to do is we're just going to link to the storage okay the storage url okay then inside that the storage where we're going to go to the images forward slash then we're just going to concatenate basically our post dot cover image right so the post that we created with the seed obviously doesn't have a cover image it's called a cover url so it will not be stored in the in this space so we're just going to change the feature of the last post that actually has a cover image so let's do that okay so basically in our database we're just going to go to the last ones or the, the last two. As you guys can see, you see the div tags right there. If we just change the featured column of the last two just to one, so it means that it is true. So 
let's refresh our browser and hopefully it works. Right, as you can see, we got our featured post, but obviously our images is actually now coming from our storage file. So all is good. As you can see, not very pretty, but this is all tests. Okay, let me show you something. If we didn't add that bang bang, let me show you. Let's go back to VS Code. If we didn't add this right there, okay, let me just copy it down. Um, you know what? Let me just comment this, copy this, the inner part like this, and just remove. Let's save it. Now, as you can see, it actually. Um, just remove the power of the tags basically and the element and actually just renders them out like this okay now the bang bang just basically accepted as is and then actually render them as an html element easy peasy stuff okay so that's all that does so if you guys it's the first time seeing it so it just allows for an HTML characters that were saved in the database because of the WYSIWYG to be just displayed as HTML elements. All right. So that's it for now. I think that's it for this episode. Uh, what we will do in the next one is we can obviously add the link to our blog page to read a single post. But before that, I think we might just need to do the index page first. Okay, so basically to display all our posts in here. So this blog site. So if we go to the browser, okay, so if we come to the browser right here, and if we go to the blog, we want to be able to see the blog like the all the posts like this, still the navigation on top there, all the posts and all the categories on the site right here. Okay, I think that's what we're going to do in the next one. All right thank you guys for watching if you like the video please give it a like if you think i need to redo the video please let me know in the comment section hopefully that's not necessary and yes if it, the likes in the comments kind of helps the google search engine for other people also to find the videos if you do find it useful that's the only reason all right thank you guys and goodbye